First of all, let me say thank you very much for inviting me and allowing me to share my thoughts on food safety. Joyce and Kevin was the one who called me and asked me to do this, so I uh, love the opportunity to share my perspective on food safety. Uh, with that, let me get my tools here. Can you advance the slides? No slides? Time out. <laughs> okay. I guess we're a little too fast for them up here. Okay. Okay. Uh, the subject I'm going to be talking about has to do with sanitary design and installation of equipment for the protection of low moisture food products. And I want to stress low, low moisture food products because there is a difference, okay, and it'll come out in my presentation. Uh, and in particular, what I'm going to be talking about is different from what Walt Staley talked about this morning, and I'm sure some of you were there and listened to him. He did a great job uh, telling us why we need food safety and the legislative issues right now involved with that. So, uh, and what I'm going to be talking about is what we need, okay? And it's really some practical ideas uh, of what we need to do in our factories to make our jobs easier and to allow us uh, to comply with food safety regulations. Uh, this is not a comprehensive list, it's just some examples. Uh, you can find guidelines for sanitary design. Uh, one of them is this uh, group, the GMA Principles of Equipment Design for Low Moisture Foods. It was developed by the Grocery Manufacturers Association Sanitary Design Working Group, which consists of sanitation professionals from uh, the top food companies. The aim of that group is to improve food safety through equipment design enhancements by working with equipment manufacturers to develop equipment with the best possible design in, in accordance with their 10 principles. Uh, I'll talk about the 10 principles. Another uh, uh, link is the Baking Industry Sanitary Standards Committee. Uh, they are now affiliated with BEMA, and BEMA is now hooked up with ANSI, so it is becoming the law, okay? And that's where you can contact them. There's also the AIB and others, okay? But uh, these are the 10 principles that this group put together. Uh, first of all, the equipment has to be cleanable to GMP, product hazard, and quality levels. Second item, the uh, equipment has to be made of compatible materials. Uh, e the equipment has to be accessible for inspection, maintenance, and cleaning and sanitation. Uh, there should be no dead spots anywhere in the equipment uh, where liquids can collect and accumulate. Uh, all hollow areas must be hermetically sealed. Uh, there should be no niches uh, on the equipment. And uh, when it comes to uh, support equipment, sanitary operational performance, hygienic design of maintenance enclosures and the like, and hygienic uh, compatibility with other systems. Those first seven are really related to the equipment. The last three are more procedural, you know, but these are the ten points that this group came up with. Uh, let me talk about my perspective now. To, for me, it's all about cleaning. Think cleaning of equipment. So often engineers design an excellent piece of equipment that functions very well, but it might be very difficult to clean. So to me, is I talk about cleanability and I play with the word. The first thing we try to do is convince the equipment manufacturers when they design the equipment to minimize the cleaning requirements by eliminating flat surfaces, ledges, crevices, and the like. And then whatever is left over, we want that easy to clean, with easy access, easy to disassemble and reassemble. Time is money. The more, the quicker we can do the cleaning, the quicker the line can be back up and in production. Materials of construction and also ergonomic design. Design it so that you don't have to strain your back to take that machine apart and the like. 
So these first two items are focus, is where we focus and talk to the equipment manufacturers. The last one is what we do with it once we get it into the shop and how we install it. Make sure we install it with proper clearances and the like. Uh, the other thing I'd like to talk about is affordability. Okay? It would be very easy for us to buy 3A standard dairy equipment and put it into a bakery. But we'd soon be out of business because we'd no longer be competitive. Okay? So in the past, what we did is we customized equipment. And the first thing when uh, a supplier came to us, okay, here we went and we handed them our specs. It was a thick book of detailed spec and we individual, we gave that to the equipment manufacturers which led to customization of their standard equipment which invariably increased the cost. So it, it was sort of a routine. <laughs> and uh, by making the equipment manufacturers aware of, clean, of the cleaning issues that uh, we're facing, uh, it has allowed them to upgrade their standard equipment and in most cases without increasing their cost. And I'll show you some examples of that. It's simply of how you do it. Uh, one thing we started doing, and for me the catalyst was really that uh, peanut recall in 89, and that's really when that uh, GMA group formed also. Uh, they came together and uh, so the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to talk to the industry as a group and to address the issues about major recalls in recent times and concerns of our industry, we shared uh, the information with equipment manufacturers. And since recalls affect the entire industry and since product protection is not and should not be a competitive advantage, the GMA group and others have shared the concerns at equipment manufacturers meetings such as the FBSA conference, the BEMA conference, and the like. Uh, and it's really already shown tremendous results. I'll show this, some of that. Addressing the need of sanitary design improvements as a joint food industry group, meaning uh, this, this uh, group started out uh, as eight companies, Nestle, General Mills, Kraft, and the like, the biggest companies. I believe it's up to 13 and may even be more today. And by addressing, uh, you know, it as an industry group, food processes, to the equipment manufacturing group, we are getting results, okay? And something that hit me, now this is an older article, was uh, back in January 2009, I saw this headline and I read it, and I read it carefully <laughs> and it, it sort of struck home, it said, uh, you can be criminally prosecuted, okay, uh, if you produce products that are contaminated. Food can be considered adulterated if it is produced under unsanitary conditions. That's a pretty serious statement, okay? And if you look at that, uh, you know, I certainly don't want to go to jail. Uh, and I don't want to, uh, you know, be accused of producing products that are not safe for our customers. Um, the, the, uh, let's talk first about equipment design. These are some practical ideas of what we mean by making equipment simpler to clean. First of all, eliminate as many flat surfaces as possible. If you look at that, you can see here a manufacturer did a great job, all round members and everything, but then they left a flat surface underneath there under the motor base, there's a dead space underneath there that you can't get to and clean at all. It would be very difficult to climb underneath there and clean it. Here is probably going the other extreme where they mounted it on two round members. This could have been two simple flat members and it's a simple idea, wouldn't have cost more and would have been much easier to clean. Uh, one thing I want to point out is I love my digital camera. I travel all over the world, visit our factories and I love to take pictures. And since I talk to young engineers in our factories worldwide, uh, I find that when English is a second language, it's difficult to get your message across. 
but pictures tell it all, okay? So I try to show it this way, and it's a little simple for everybody here, but at least it gets the message across in China, in India, and wherever I travel. Uh, this is another way of doing it. Uh, you can use simple shaft-mounted gearboxes. Instead of big motor mounts underneath, get the boards out for us. Use pulley drives, no chains, nothing. It's another way of uh, making it easier to clean. Uh, when you have hoppers like this, make them conical, make them round. If you can't, at least make it so it has a minimum of a, 15, a 50 millimeter radius so you can clean it. Uh, eliminate these crevices. I don't know why they put this little bracket in there, but you can see how time consuming it is to clean those little spaces there. When you mount uh, a, something against a metal frame, leave spacers. Ideally, those spacers should even be larger to allow good access for cleaning. This is a good example. Here is where a tabletop conveyor is attached to a main conveyor, and rather than mounting it against the frame, you leave some little spacers in there. It doesn't cost extra. It's, it's peanuts, but it, it makes things much easier to clean. A lot of equipment manufacturers like to use uniform, uniform, uh, universal machine frames uh, where they have one frame and then they attach whatever they need. And they drill all the holes in the beginning and leave the other ones blank. Well, we don't like that because that increases a lot of cleaning for us. Okay? Dirt gets in there, that means we have to clean that. So we are now encouraging all the equipment manufacturers not to follow that practice anymore but, and don't leave extra holes. Uh, this is an example of two different ways you can do it. It serves the same purpose. You bend this edge over uh, to get some strength and rigidity, but look at the dirt accumulation there. You can simply bend it over this way and it stays clean. And these are just you know, other examples of good and bad. Uh, roof joists. I mean, this, this is an absolute horror show. There are hundreds of these roof joists in this factory, okay? Take a look at that. How do you clean something like that? Look at that ledge, look at that dirt in there. And when you get hundreds of these up there in the air, how the heck do you clean that? Yeah? It's, it's something we should never be allowed in a food plant. Uh, aluminum frames uh, for conveyors. Uh, you see it a lot, people use it, it's inexpensive. They put a plastic strip in there. Sometimes the plastic strips are there, sometimes they're not, and it is very difficult to clean. Uh, we, we use them in packaging, primarily in the packaging area, and it's okay, but I would say avoid them if you can. Uh, if another option is it is acceptable if you put a good stainless steel plate on it and you seal the area off completely. This is that same aluminum frame, but it is sealed. Uh, and it also acts as a guide at the same time. Uh, this is the same uh, aluminum frame, but they put a plate against it, and there's a conveyor on each side with a table, so it's another good way to do it. Uh, here, the manufacturer probably thought they did a great job, you know, you look round members and everything, but again, uh, think about it. Why do you even need these cross members here? Why not just put a little gusset? With this strong frame, you probably wouldn't even have needed that, and it would have made it much easier to get under there, under there for cleaning. Uh, panel legs, okay? Uh, this is much easier to clean. Simple legs, round legs underneath the panel, okay? When a base like this, you can seal it, but moisture gets underneath there. Uh, it, it is a real problem. Do not use these. Uh, angle iron legs, okay? If you look carefully, you can see where they cleaned. <laughs> look, see the line? Okay. And, and you, you have to get behind there to really clean these, so don't use them, okay? Uh, air handler supports, another factory. They have many, many of these air conditioning units sitting in the room, and they made a little box frame. You can't get under there. This angle line is backwards. How do you get in there to clean, okay? That is just dumb, you know, and you need to teach the young, 
It is, it really is, you know. And here, so I told them that, and then, I don't know, they painted it, and you can see, they, they listened to me, and, and they, they put a little bracket in there to, you know, stiffen the leg, but they cut it out. You can see where they cut it out. But at least it's open. It serves the same purpose, you know. And this is the kind of message you need to get across to them. Uh, when it comes to belt conveyors, uh, there uh, we have some very good guidelines that we will share with any equipment manufacturer in designing uh, conveyor belts uh, that can be cleaned, uh, conveyors. Uh, these are all the different components, the drives, the take-ups, the infeed discharge nodes, the rollers, belt trackers, and the like. And what we're saying about that uh, belt conveyors must be easy to maintain and clean. I'm not going to go through all the words here. I guess you're all going to get copies of this so you can read it. Uh, all rollers in contact with the product side of the belt uh, are to be easily accessible or removable without the use of tools for cleaning purposes. This is very, very important. I'll show some examples of that. Another option is to Teflon coat the rollers. Uh, it will eliminate some of the product buildup that you get on the belts. Uh, just some of the basic components we talk about. Here is a roller that's in contact with the product side of the belt. Uh, there's another one, there's another one, and there's another one. All of these rollers must be easily accessible for cleaning or removable without tools for proper cleaning. Uh, one of the things that we do not allow, and a lot of companies like to do it, is what they call tandem drives. Tandem drives is when you use two drive rollers, uh, especially on long belt conveyors. Uh, and when you have a tandem drive, one of the drive rollers is always in contact with the product side of the belt. And you cannot clean those. They're, they're not easily accessible. They're very difficult to access. And so we do not allow any what we call tandem drives. They have to be single roll drives. They get quite big when it's a long conveyor, but so be it. Okay, and this shows how we can remove all the rollers, and I'll have another picture of that. Here, for example, on this conveyor, you take the tension off, you can lift out those rollers. You can slip them out. This uh, also serves for belt stretch. You know, as the belt stretches, you can put that back, but you take the tension off, and you can lift that roller out. Uh, this, is, this is a common, common problem on the, on the left. When you have a, a conveyor that has an extendable noser or a retractable noser, okay, there's always a buried roller in there. And that roller is in contact with the product side of the belt, and it, it's impossible to access for cleaning. You cannot reach in there. So if you have to do an allergen cleaning job, how the heck do you clean that? Okay? So... What we are telling the equipment manufacturers is to do it this way, okay? You have a simple, you lift it up, you extend the shaft, and you always use ER bearings, so you use the bearing in the roller, okay? And especially if it's a wide conveyor, we put some guides, so you just lift them on there, you can slide them in, uh, in and out very easily, and they're removable, and you can clean them. But this is just another way of, of making things easy to clean. Belt scrapers, very, very, very important. And they have to be properly designed. Again, this is a standard design that we'll give to any manufacturer. And if these things are done properly, it really makes a difference. Here it shows, this was a brand new installation in one of our factories. And look at the belt uh, buildup already, okay? Look at the, the roller buildup. This was only like two or three months old, this installation. And here you see the same thing. It's a very messy operation. You see all this. You have a drip pan underneath, okay? But look how clean the roller is if you have a proper belt scraper. That's all the difference. You need to have proper belt scrapers. This again shows the same installation. These were two adjacent lines, one with and one without proper belt scrapers. Look at the difference in the belt support rollers. And the other thing is... On this new installation, look at all the rollers, how they're built up. They're very difficult to access for cleaning because they're up in the air, but you can get to them. But if you look carefully, you can see that the belt was already shot. It's already frayed from, because that 
when, when you get build up like that, it makes the tracking of the belt very difficult and you ruin the belts very, very quickly. Uh, this is something that we started using recently. Uh, instead of using solid rollers on you know, low tension belt support rollers, they use these little discs. And the bakeries tell me they love it because it's so much easier to clean. The buildup is absolutely minimal. And besides that, the manufacturers tell me this is much lower in cost than a solid machined roller. So this is another way you can make your job easy. Uh, when it comes to legs, don't use these legs. Again, this is part of that aluminum frame structure because very often you have dead spaces there and you find all kinds of stuff underneath there. Uh, sanitary legs, much better. Uh, this is not bad. It's a pretty decent leg. What I would have preferred there is a uh, uh, tripod leg. I'll show it on the next slide. This is a good leg. Okay, they're available. They're catalog items today. You can buy them, encourage your equipment suppliers to use them. They are probably a little more expensive, but definitely worth it. This is what I mean by the tripod leg. It serves the same purpose. It's more open. It's easier to clean. Uh, this is good, but do you really need this bracket to prevent you from proper cleaning underneath there? You could have done it easily with the tripod leg there and the tripod leg there, and you wouldn't have needed that bracket. So think cleaning. Constantly think cleaning. Uh, this we use is actually from one of our bakeries here in North America. Uh, excellent leg, probably a little more expensive. You can probably buy uh, some of the more commercial legs. This is a custom-made leg. Whoops. How did I get back here? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, guides, when you convey dough or something f like this, this is a good way to do that, to make these side guides uh, tilt up. It provides complete access. You can clean underneath there. Uh, it's a good way to do that. Uh, very often you have conveyors with these multiple guides, difficult to reach in and clean. Uh, make it so that it's very easy to lift simply by pushing down on this bar. Uh, the whole assembly lifts. You can do it from both sides or one side at a time, whatever, and then the whole belt is accessible for cleaning and you can easily uh, reach in here and wipe uh, everything down. So another good idea for, for doing that. Uh, do I need to say more? Okay. Uh, use reinforced edges. Okay, look at this. This ends up in your product, okay? And could, could cause a recall. Absolutely unacceptable. Uh, when you have conveyor crossovers, when you go over product, although the product is already wrapped in a package, uh, still, uh, we encourage at least 100 millimeter kick plates so no dirt can fall in from any shoes and of course solid plates uh, on the deck plate. Again, uh, the, the kick plate should be at least four inches or 100 millimeters high with good rolled corners. Uh, this is not good. Those corners are difficult to clean. Some people leave a gap there. We also don't like that. Especially, don't put the, the handrail on the inside. Okay, I'll show you a better picture. Uh, this is what we like to do, where we uh, roll the deck plate, and we always extend it over the frame. And in wet areas, because when you extend it over the frame, you minimize that gap. And in wet areas, uh, we even cork that area when it's in a wet process area. And the handrails always should be on the outside. Uh, this is a good installation. You see the rolled corners, much easier to clean. Uh, again, here, uh, you did, it, this is wide open. You can get underneath there. It's not even attached to the bottom. It's sort of hung from the upper structure. Uh, again, uh, do I need to say more? Very difficult. Why even have that plate there? Uh, this is better, uh, not necessarily perfect. Uh, very poor. Uh, this was a new installation and uh, definitely should not have been done like this. Look at all these corners. You can't get underneath there. Uh, another close-up here. 
how do you clean something like that? It just makes life much more difficult. Uh, this is a good design. Uh, it shows some stairs, okay? It's not crossing over product, so you can leave them open. And, but when you look carefully, uh, what's really interesting, you see the gap here? Uh, when you, how, the, how that is done is you just simply weld a tab underneath there and you leave a gap and then you just have an aluminum plate that you uh, bolt on. So this is a very easy way to do it and a, a good way to, to build stairs. Uh, I came across this picture recently. I just took it, I guess, back in November, uh, visiting one of our bakeries. And uh, I thought it was a clever idea. A little ingredient card, you know how we have the minor ingredient scaling station there that gets rolled around from mixer to mixer. And they put a little shed roof on it, you know, to avoid anything from, f to prevent anything from falling into these containers. So uh, clever idea, simple idea, doesn't cost <coughs> really anything. And another thing I thought was clever is uh, they used a simple lifting device here to raise it up, raise this whole cart up so it's accessible, so when they dump it into the mixer, they can do it. Another way is this shield up here. You see there's a dotro underneath it. Un unfortunately, this is an old installation. Today, when we do newer installations, we go to two-way tilt mixers, so we have a permanent platform from the back, okay? As opposed to, now this has to be a portable platform. Every time you dump a dough, you gotta roll it out of the way. It's a nuisance, okay? But, I mean, there are many, many installations that are still like that. But at least they're protecting it with this shield up here and they got this over here, so it's, it's again, some simple ideas. Uh, okay, show you some of the improvements. Here's a company that uh, uh, builds equipment for our industry, and this is one of their doors here. Uh, this used to be full of flour all the time, this trough underneath here, so they punched holes in there, okay? So I said to them, why do it that way? <laughs> you know. O the only reason you bend it over like that is to create strength, okay? Uh, why not do it? So the first version they did, they bent this ed edge upwards and there was still flour in there. So I said, just bend it like this, okay? It serves the same purpose. It doesn't accumulate any flour. It's very easy. So when you open the door, this is the frame it rests against. So when you open the door, it's completely open. Simple idea. It doesn't cost, it actually costs less money to do this. Uh, Another example of an improvement, this is a wire cut machine for chocolate chip cookies. Uh, the old design, everything had bolted on covers, the motor was underneath, you couldn't get to anything, very difficult to clean. Here's the new design, okay? It didn't cost them anything more. Everything is wide open. They're hinged covers, okay? You can open it, everything is easily accessible for cleaning. A rotary molder, again, the old design, motor underneath, you couldn't get to anything. The new machine, I actually have another better picture, uh, has hinged doors and you can get into the machine. Now everything is done with standoffs, okay? You can get in there, you can, it's very good, very good design. Uh, they even mounted the panel so that it slopes a little bit so that there's no accumulation of moisture or anything on it. Uh, the motors are outboard now, there's nothing underneath, okay? And uh, shaft mounted, you know, gearboxes, gear, gearhead motors, very open. And look, how this whole machine opens up for cleaning when you can change your die rolls very, very easily. So what an improvement over the old design. Okay, so, so much for uh, equipment uh, uh, manufacturing and the design of equipment. Let's talk about installation practices. Very often, we get the equipment manufacturers to do a great job, and then we mess it up by putting it too close to the floor, too close to the wall, or et cetera. So this is our responsibility. Now, here they followed BISC standards. They left six inches, okay? That's what BISC calls for. You're supposed to have six-inch clearance underneath the equipment. But why even put it there? Why not put it up overhead or here? Same installation. This, you can sweep underneath, it's excellent. Why do this? Uh, again, same idea. You know, yeah, okay, I got pretty decent clearance there, but why even do this? Why not mount that way up here so you can just really access everything for cleaning? Uh, 
Again, a poor installation with the wire down here. People have already stepped on it. This is an open trough. You can see stuff falling in there. There are wires in there, I mean cables in there. I mean, that's absolutely horrible. And that was a new installation. Uh, pump mounts. These are both chocolate pumps in the same factory. Okay? Look at this. It's nice and open. You can clean. How do you clean underneath something like that? Okay, look at this long frame. Impossible to clean. Again, this is okay, not the best, but it's certainly better than this. Uh, this is pretty decent. They've got nice sanitary legs in here, but this is even better with more clearance. If you have the space, why not do it? And it doesn't cost more money. It's just how you do it. Again, two times bad. Okay, once underneath the motor here. Uh, on a pump, I should say, and then the, the larger the platform or base, the, the more space you need to create. Uh, look at underneath this, this tank, you know, I mean, there's just in total inadequate space to get underneath there for cleaning. Uh, this is a beautiful installation. Look at all the clearances you have underneath the tanks and everything. Again, I saw this uh, recently uh, in one of our factories. Uh, this is an installation that wasn't even finished. They were still working on it in one of our bakeries. And uh, I mean, they were sort of proud of what they're doing. I said, well, how are you going to clean underneath there? Okay, how, do you, how are you going to do that? And all they could have done is made longer legs and you would have been able to clean on it. So they obviously weren't thinking cleaning. Okay, so simple, make this shows a very good installation. This is what good looks like. Look at the open area. Look how easy it is to clean. Look at the leg structure. Okay. Uh, trapped areas. This is a picture that's absolutely, look, how do you clean in there? You know, absolutely impossible. Uh, this is a condensate, condensate pump sitting on the floor. Uh, open ends. Underneath here, you can't even get underneath there, even if you tried. It's another picture of it. Uh, another picture of a condensate pump. They just parked it on the floor and then they ran the condensate line along the floor. You see this quite often on cooling tunnels because they, the condensate has to drain and they drain it somewhere. So for very little money, you can buy a little condensate pump. I even have it at home in my air conditioner, okay? And you can pump it up and pump it away, okay? Don't run lines along the floor so that you can drain condensate from these units. Oh, this is the enemy. This is absolutely the enemy. Uh, don't ever allow Unistrut in any food production area. Plumbers, electricians love to use it because it's cheap. They just cut it off and hang things, okay? Use a piece of angle iron, okay? If it's a heavy load, use a piece of channel iron, okay? But it takes a little more effort to drill a couple of holes to hang something, okay? But don't ever use Unistrut. Uh, this was a brand new installation. Look at all the Unistrut here looking right behind a dough mixer in a wet area, you know, messy. This is this leg here at the bottom. Dough is already in there. How do you clean something like that? Impossible. So as I said, Unistrut is the absolute enemy in a food production area. Do not ever use Unistrut or allow them to use Unistrut in your food production areas. Uh, all thread hanger rods, we don't allow them, okay, because they build up dirt and they're very difficult to clean. Usually we say no more than six inches of thread so you can level conveyors as you hang them. Uh, this probably could have done even a little bit better as opposed to, but it's a solid rod that's threaded. Uh, here they thought they were clever. They used all thread and then they wanted to hide it, so they put a sleeve over. This made it worse because now the insects can crawl in there and they like those dark spaces where they can hide, you know? So this is actually... Uh, Again, when you mount panels, you can't clean. There's no access there. They used uh, uh, Unistrut here as brackets. Uh, insufficient clearances behind. Again, panels like this. Uh, 
if you must mount something against the wall, make sure you cork it all the way around and that you keep insects out. Don't leave spaces where insects can hide. Again, insufficient clearances, bad and good next to each other. Uh, this one has probably more than space than is needed, but we also like to now put gable tops on panels. We're, we started to do that. That actually came from uh, the former Danone side of the business. They do that on all their control panels. That was one of their standards. And nice sanitary legs. Uh, if you have to, you can also use a concrete base. You know, they're acceptable. Just don't set them on the floor without it. Uh, when you mount a conduit or pipes along the wall, use standoff brackets. Here you're creating a crevice that cannot be cleaned. It's, you know, it just becomes a dirt trap. Something like this, again, uh, insects hide behind there. You cannot clean that area. Uh, this is a simple, how much does it cost? You know, a little standoff bracket, you create a gap, and at least you, you know, dirt can fall through and you can clean. In this picture, you see good and bad next to each other. Mounted against the wall, and this is a little standoff bracket. Oh, I'm out of time? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Unistrut, don't use it. Okay. Uh, wiring, very difficult to clean. Uh, this is in a wet area. Uh, underneath the flower silo, uh, impossible to clean. Okay? Impossible to clean. I'm just going to go through these very quickly. Look at this. Look at the flower in here. It's a nightmare. Don't use that, okay? In packaging areas, sometimes we allow that, okay? But this was a good idea. Put a little cover over it because you don't have flower dust around. Whenever you have flower dust around, don't do it. These trays, don't use them. People throw them in there. Uh, cable racks are a little easier, but don't mount it this way. Uh, Look at this. How do you clean something like that? There was flower dust in there. Hundreds of cables. Uh, if you do use it, we say mount them vertically, okay, and make them accessible for cleaning. Uh, shows an installation that was done very well, okay, but it's very time consuming to do a job like this, okay. But it's a different wiring standards between Europe and North America, and we get into this situation. Again, well done. Many cables. Uh, nicely done, but I don't like this open area, okay? Look at this area here. Uh, that's the bottom of that panel, okay? I call that cockroach hotel. How do you clean something like that, okay? If you have to do it, do it properly, okay? Uh, to me, this is ideal, okay? Using conduit and seal tight. Uh, again, a good picture. Uh, use wireways. Okay, when you have a lot of wireways, these are NEMA 12 wireways, gasketed. Also have some discipline so that if you abandon a hole, make sure you seal it. Uh, this is a low-cost wireway I've seen used in Europe in a packaging area. It's okay. Uh, machine frames. Uh, in this country, I believe it's illegal to use. It's clean, but it's illegal uh, because people can drill through them and get electrocuted. Totally unacceptable, open spaces like that. Uh, <coughs> this, to me, is a good installation. They ran everything as high as they could. Nice sanitary legs. They used a uh, wireway, and the equipment is at least, you know, accessible for cleaning. Okay, my last slide. Okay. Uh, I've talked about cleanability, and I've talked about affordability. What is wrong here? What, wh when you talk about cleanability, and this is the test, okay? I was just want to figure out if you paid attention, okay? What is wrong here? W look, look at this carefully, and there's several things that are wrong when it comes to cleanability and affordability. Remember, we're in the biscuit industry. We're not in the meat industry. We're not in the dairy industry, okay? So it is a competitive business, and where could we have saved money, and where... Okay. Okay, I lost my slide. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Uh, you're 100% right. Okay. There are holes that are abandoned. Okay. Insect will crawl in there. Uh, we drill through the tube, okay, which we say you shouldn't do, which is all the two things that you pointed out, right? Okay. And this morning, when we were out there together, somebody from Fleetwood, they're in the meat industry, right? They said they don't even allow any members a tube or a, 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 you know, a, a square tubing or piping. It has to be a solid member, they say. Good job, good job. So, uh, what else? What else is wrong here? Yeah, that's a, that's the other thing. Okay, and the other thing is, first of all, all the machine frames made out of stainless steel. In the biscuit industry, you know, unless you're in a wet area, that's not necessary. You know, you, you don't need to do that. So, when it comes to affordability, this is overdone, and this is actually in a bakery. And uh, these members here, you should not use tube steel. Look, they had to weld the end shut. I mean, this costs money to do that. Why not use a simple piece of angle iron? You know, and if, uh, if it's a heavy load, use a piece of channel. You know, much easier to do. Okay? Anyway, that's my story. Thank you. Thank you.